speaking of generative AI, I know uh, you've already alluded to that generative AI shouldn't be what people think of as everything these days, but we have had an explosion of generative AI models and applications, especially in the last year. Capabilities since the release of GPT-4 have been, in my view, staggering. I personally went from being skeptical about whatever AGI is happening in our lifetimes, but the release of GPT-4 made me think, whoa, something like whatever AGI is <laughs> could maybe happen in our lifetimes. Um, so I think there's there has been this explosion. I think that it relates to real world powerful capabilities we see in foundation models like GPT, Gemini, Dolly. Um, do you think that foundation models like these are passing fad or are they an integral part of the future of AI? Oh, no, no. I think generative AI is highly transformative. And, you know, the word fad shouldn't enter the vocabulary. I'll talk about the limitations. Um, I'm going to break your heart, but I don't think generative AI is leading to AGI anytime soon. And I can at least give you my view of why that is. But let's put that as an aside for for a second. Listen, um, what generative AI has done for us as a society is delivered a whole new way to interact with technology and software, whether it's software standalone or wrapped in a device, robot, some form of hardware, whatever one might want. Um, We fundamentally can interact with technology in a human-like manner. And as long as we have fault toleration, again, back to an earlier part of our conversation, it can do summarization. It can, I joke that, you know, a technology has crossed the chasm and is here to stay when grandma wants to hug the computer because ChatGPT told such a cute little joke and your 10-year-old, you know, thinks that they don't have to write any original papers, ChatGPT is doing it for them. So we've crossed that chasm of, I'm using the term three times now, but um, of mass mass consumerization. But the at least early breakthrough in that regard is with user interfaces, user experiences, and multimodalities from one, you know, from of, for content, period, sort of hugely transformative. In fact, if a software company from here on doesn't have some Gen AI facet to their interface and user experience, they will fall behind no matter what, because there, that will be a um, consumer and an enterprise expectation. AI is bigger than that. And the reason why Gen AI has taken off is because, you know, what we just outlined, which is it's tangible, everyone can interact with it and see the immediate impact. You, when you combine Gen AI with some of the other architectures, and it's making its way into the other architecture, so it will be interesting to see where we are, you know, five, ten years from now. I think I think it will be impactful, but you know, there are many, 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 many use cases that don't involve Gen AI that are are going to be and have been incredibly incredibly transformative. I think OpenAI and in particular ChatGPT drew a lot of attention to this space and there are questions to be had. So I don't think it's a fed, but I have questions around what the steady state will be. If you think about the um large language model or foundation model providers, whether it's open AI, whether it's Google, whether it is you know, Anthropic or here, what have you. First of all, it bears a lot of analogy to what we saw in the cloud, because even though some of these names may be, maybe feel very startup-y, really behind them, you have the large existing incumbents. You have, you know, Microsoft, you have Google, you have Amazon, you know, Google is twice, both as a its own platform and the companies that it backs. Amazon, you know, Salesforce, Oracle, I can go on and on. You know, that foundational, or more, more accurately, perhaps that infrastructure layer is very capital, capital intensive. And therefore, it's been backed by, you know, incumbents, tech incumbents, where on a relative basis, the capital abundance is available. There are then a ton of opportunities well above sort of in that middle layer, but really more importantly in the application layer within Gen AI, where you can develop both proprietary algorithms and sort of, you know, your own prompting and whatnot to be differentiated. 
in fact, again, I, I made a reference to the cloud. If you think about what we saw in the cloud era for every AWS and GCP and Azure and you know a few others that are farther lower on the list, you had hundreds and hundreds of companies that became SaaS applications that became multi-billion dollar companies. So important to differentiate between, between the two because I will at times or more times than I care, get the question, is it game over because OpenAI will do everything? And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Additionally, it begs the question of where is the differentiation at this infrastructure layer between this sort of it has oligopoly-like characteristics and open source. I don't think Meta is a dumb player and they've gone fully open source. I think one should watch them carefully. Will this be the infrastructure that at some point is a dumb pipe? Like, you know, will there be a higher differentiation between an open AI platform and a Google platform or an open source platform? Will it be driven by performance? Will it be driven by pricing? Like at some point, ultimately, if the web is the entire data set, um, we will be trained on the same data set. So where will the differentiation come? Will they be commoditized? I think there is a high, high risk of commoditization. I could argue, albeit I don't know, that that's why OpenAI is trying to enter so many you know, adjacent um, areas and areas higher up on the stack um, and lower you know, with the, what they're doing around compute and you know, chips, et cetera to perhaps try to build a differentiation. But I have fundamental questions around differentiation for these major infrastructure players. I'll, I'll pause at that. Very cool. Well, so I guess there is heartening news there for people who are listening and want to be creating really valuable SaaS businesses at the application layer, because it sounds like there there is a smaller risk of commoditization that you see in the infrastructure layer. Correct. Well, and very few players in that. I mean, you have to be an incredibly well-funded, beyond what's, what we've seen typically, company to play at the infrastructure layer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Billions, billions. Yeah. I heard um, trillions. Tri I heard opening yeah. trillions. <laughs> there you yeah. have it. 